In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create resin stack vertical runners for 3D printing. You'll get an insight into the creation of these structures and some thoughts about the theories and the process of vertical 3D printing. So, here we are inside Maya, which is one of the software packages I use next to ZBrush to create uh, the 3D printable action figure kits. So, in this scene, I have set up a representation of the build volume of my Elegoo Mars 3. And those of you who are familiar with our print files, you can see those are the parts of the heavy exo armor. And to start with the process of uh, laying out a uh, vertical resin stack version of the print file, you first have to rearrange the parts. The reason I use the build volume here is so that you can get a representation of the space you have to see if your parts are laid out correctly. The reason for this is we want to save as much space as possible. The vertical resin stack layout is to make the best use of your build platform. As you can see, this is a standard horizontal layout I have for the print files. So you can print maximum, I would say maximum three of these in one go. Of course, since you don't print so high, it takes roughly like two hours or so to print these. And if we stack them up vertically, of course, it takes much longer. But you get roughly, I would say, six prints in one go. And you don't have to clean up your build platform in between, set up a new print. So you save a lot of time and it's very efficient. So to start, we're going to have a vertical layout. So here you can see new parts. They fit nicely into the build volume. I'm gonna hide this for now. So what you can see here is up here on the top, you have the left side parts and those parts are mirrored in the end. So you just need to lay them out once and then you can just mirror them over. And down here are the individual parts. Now, everything is centered as you can see. So you can just start with a basic layout doesn't need to be perfect, just make sure there's enough room in between the parts because it's going to be filled with support structures that you have to build on your own. So what I usually start with is frames and the base. So you have the base parts. These are just, in this case, one millimeter high discs just shoved together. So you have a nice base that sticks to the build platform. It's just trial and error, basically. You, you experiment with it, you try to come up with a shape that works, and um, I have to say this works, <laughs> because I tried and found out the hard way. I mean, you can compare it with the, with the base structures you get in, in slicers like uh, Cheeto Box or uh, your other preferred slicer software. So it basically follows the same principles. Just a base, flat, that gives enough adhesive uh, power or section uh, for your construction to, uh, to stay on the platform. So as you can see, when we take a look from the top, the base is encompassing all the parts. The parts are more or less centered in the middle. So to have an even more or less even weight distribution, so there's nothing outside. Um, of the base and one of the reasons is we're going to later on add more of these support structures and they sit nicely here on the base. So first build a frame. The frame is built out of it's, it's tubes but it's actually um, it's actually spheres and I can quickly show you how I do this and why I do this. So um, let's start with a basic sphere. I just created a sphere up here. Let's move it out here so you can see it better. These are my settings for it. It's just um, standard 3D modeling stuff. So 12 sides each. You can have more or less, depends on your preferences. So what I do now is I'm going into a side view. I select the faces up here and just extrude them 
which gives me a tube. Now I go back to uh, my object view and I see you have the center uh, is here at the, at the center of the previous uh, sphere. The reason I do this is I can just copy this tube with the correct rotational center, bring it up, position it at the center top here. And then I can rotate this around to create my frame structure. And it's at the perfect spot. I have these two elements and I can just export them and they print like an L shape in this case. So that's how these struts and all the following support structures are created. And uh, if I want to have some more of a complex structure, I can just clone them move them in the right spot and these always give a nice connection. So 3D printing doesn't care about uh, that these parts are separated. If I export them as one STL, the slicer software treats them as a single object. So you don't have to connect them, you don't have to weld any vertices. It's just a simple way of creating a printable structure, a runner for your vertical resin stack print setup. You can do this on any other software of course. I'm using Maya but you can use Blender. The, the, the principles are all the same. So okay let's delete these and now we're going through the base structure. As you can see I have the, the frame laid out here. Um, I sorted the parts into regions so the body parts, the lower leg, foot, upper leg, armor, shoulder armor, lower arm armor, the hands and the shields that go in the back of the backpack. And what I want to do next is to stabilize it. I have some additional supports I put on the side and in the center. Same principle as with uh, creating supports in your slicer software. You have these kind of struts like scaffolding shapes which make sure that during the print the model is always held in place and stable, not wiggling, you get the idea. So the next thing I want to do is create separations and further struts in between the parts because this, now this is all free hanging and of course I need points where I can connect the supports to. Remember this all prints upside down, which means I need to create support struts that connect the parts to the frame. And to give more stabilization and um, to give more space where I can connect the final support struts to, I have further struts. This is uh, another division. I'm trying to find ways, that is why I left room in between the parts, to further stabilize the frame. You see these 45 degree angle struts, they further stabilize the frame. They add separation where I can put small support structures to connect to the parts themselves. Notice that these are not connected to the parts yet. Uh, small connection parts we will get to later. So this is just like a further layout to see, okay, where do I need to support my frame better? and how can I separate parts and uh, create some spaces where I can add or attach the final support structures to. Another important aspect of this vertical resin stack approach is things that print horizontally, like this bar for example, or this bar, or, or the top bar, they usually need further support. If you have horizontal structures um, free hanging without any support, like here, they usually tend to lay off. Like you can see this in, in, in prints, like if I would print this like this, it would probably, like, like you see here in this area or this area, um, the layers would probably come off from like sheets of paper, like if you open a book and they wouldn't attach because there's no, not much support and the parts deform after print, so they usually don't stick to each other very well. So by further separating these, by adding support structures in the middle, 
and uh, these additional support structures, regions, areas like this are much more stable. Um, they have additional support, which means they deform less between printing the layers. So the chances that you get a solid structure without them separating, without the layers separating during print, are uh, much bigger. With this layout now complete, I have to continue with the small supports, with the actual supports that are connecting the parts to the, to the frame. And these I can show you. I started here at the center. In the in case of the action figures, it's all left-right separated, but here I have some additional parts because the exo armors, um, they consist of more parts than the action figures and they have some very big parts and um, so it's not completely mirrored. Just um, So here I start uh, out in the center with the center parts, which I cannot, cannot mirror. And here you can see same principle, I have these struts, these have a di diameter of 0 0.3 <coughs> millimeter. By the way, uh, we're talking millimeter here. It's basically what you're used to from Slicer software. So 0 0.3 millimeter for the size, for the scale is quite well and sufficient um, for support structures. So I start out here in the middle, I set my small support structures. Make sure that you leave no overhangs. I'm going to add the other one side. Here you can see it better, like I start out at the very bottom and you can just freely move this around and see if they attach correctly. For example, this disc shape here needs to be connected at the very bottom. So I can just take a strut, move it freely and see where the sweet spot is to connect it. And that's fine. So, and then I try to have as uh, many connections as necessary, but not too many. I mean, these are small support structures, so a little bit of trial and error and a bit of knowledge, um, how much does your part weigh. It has to do a lot with experience um, from previous prints. I know, okay, this will probably hold. It's probably even too many support structures, but since they're super small, they don't use much material, it doesn't have to be super optimized. If the print result is good, that's fine with me. So I just uh, go by trial and error anyway. So this is the start. I uh, try to figure out the best spots to put my support structures. Here you can now see the green additional struts and why they are set up like the way they are here, because I need the space to attach my final support structures to. Like this is a nice example of uh, having a disc join. This is how I usually print them, like with uh, four or five supports in the center, starting at the lowest point and also supporting the hinges because everything that prints horizontally can layer off between, in between layers if it's not supported. So I always make sure to have some supports set up at the hinge joints. So that's the basic principle. You just pick these, move these around, scale them up. Like here, for example, if I want to have another support here, I just duplicate this, go to the vertex uh, editor, move these up, make it a bit bigger. So in this, this way, I would have another support structure here. And that's all that there is to it. It's a bit trial and error. See that you can find a nice uh, setup for your resin stack runner. And make sure you connect all the parts. Make sure there's no free hanging parts. Always be aware this prints upside down. So turn it around once in a while. Check that, that everything connects. That nothing would print into empty space. And then you're good to go. So we have the center support structures. We have the left side parts, left hand part support structures. Now <clears throat> there are some individual support structures, I'm gonna show you these, it's for all these parts. Of course the struts, I uh, just copy and mirror them. Same thing goes for the, uh, for the other supports. Of course I already have my, my parts mirrored. The good thing is you don't have to place them twice, you just have a group, you, you group them, you mirror the parts over to the other side, done. Just do half the work, get the full result. Now, 
Same goes with the right-sided support structures. They are just copied and mirrored. And this is the whole setup. This is what it looks like. And now it's time for a test print. So, we can select the whole bunch. File, export selection, export an STL. Bring it into Cheetah Box. So, rotate it 90 degrees and we can see it fits really nice just inside the, the build volume as planned. I have all the parts here in my runner. Sits nice on the, on the bottom. I don't need to add additional support structures. This will print nicely. And as you can see, I'm using much more of my build volume now since I'm printing in the vertical. That is, let's try this. I'm gonna move it to the edge, clone it, another one, another one. That would actually work. So I can print seven pieces in one go. Um, if you remember, I mentioned earlier, if you would use the vertical layout, you could maximally maximum print two, maybe three, if you're really creative with the placement of the parts. But that's maximum three. And let's see, um, we should just quickly Compare times. Let's open up the standard layout. So I'm going to select them all, place them, center. Okay, let's see. Okay, looks like you could get maybe, maybe three of them. Ah, okay, that's a bit. I would say rather two. Let's say you can print two of those and slice them with my settings. And the print time would be 1 hour 49. So, since it's a DLP printer, it doesn't matter if you fill the platform full, just the height matters for print time. So, let's say you fill platform with two sets, same, same amount of printing time, 149, so roughly two hours. So, let's go back, open up our resin stack version, rotate. So slice, as I said, it doesn't matter how much you fill the platform, just the height of the print is uh, relevant uh, for the printing time with DLP printers. So now we have 6 hours 14 minutes. So let's see, 6 hours divided by 7 is 0.85 per print. You actually save time. If you wanted to print seven copies of these, you'd have to have in the vertical layout at least four printing procedures and in between you have to clean the platform. This not only saves printing time, but also it saves, uh, saves you cleanup preparation time. So that's a good thing. And here you can see the final print result. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to support this channel. Thank you for watching and happy printing!